is the M4 Max really worth the extra money compared to the M4 Pro? Well, today we're gonna run a bunch of tests, including new ones like DaVinci Resolve to find out if you should spend the extra money. Now, here are the full specs. And you can see we're comparing $2,500 to $4,000. Now, you do get double the storage, you get double the RAM, and you also get two extra performance cores and double the graphics cores. But even if you upgrade your RAM and your storage, you're still looking at a difference of $900. And you probably know that extra specs don't always mean a lot of extra performance. So let's jump into it. Starting off with Geekbench 6, here if we take a look, the single core score is very similar, slightly higher on the M4 Max. In terms of multi-core score, we do have a lead, but that's only 16% faster. So for general computing, if we do the math, well, you get nine points per dollar spent with the M4 Pro compared to six and a half dollars. You get a lot better bang for the buck with the M4 Pro. Now, both of these are charged to 100% and I'm going to go ahead and unplug them because with the M4 Max, well, it's going to suck more battery power because of the chips and the fans, which are identical in both systems, are going to run louder because it's hotter. So that will kill some of the battery. We'll take a look at that. Now testing for web applications, which a lot of people are using these days. Well, the M4 Max is faster, but by only 5%. So if you mostly use web apps, there's no reason to upgrade. And now running our Xcode test, the M4 Pro took 106 seconds compared to 84 seconds. So that's definitely a noticeable improvement, about 26%. It'll be up to you if it's worth that time savings. Now you guys keep asking us to make sure we use our logic test. So here we go. Surprisingly, the M4 Pro could do 292 tracks compared to 400. So yes, the M4 Pro is a lot, better if you're gonna do crazy stuff. You have more performance because of the better memory bandwidth, but the M4 Pro does phenomenally good for the price. Now, before we get into graphics, I'm gonna run Cinebench so we can max out the CPUs, and I also wanna look at the fan speeds and noise because the M4 Pro does run hot. Let's start our test, and I wanna open up MX Power Gadget, and right away, you guys can see we hit 54 watts compared to 45 right there. So the extra cores definitely suck more power and the system heats up quicker as well. I can already hear the M4 Max laptops fan spinning up. You guys see those high temperatures there? And now the M4 Pro is catching up, trying to cool itself down. And the M4 Max actually peaked at about 60 watts. That's a lot of extra power for two more cores. You guys can see the fans are almost maxed out compared to the M4 Pro, which are running a lot quieter. All right, guys, we have 2,045 compared to 1,721. So at full load, that is 18% faster. Very similar price to performance as we saw in Geekbench. And now let's switch over to the graphic side because we have double the graphics cores here. And looking at our results here, we have 16,570 compared to 8,424. That's literally double the performance. And now looking at bank for the buck, we have 4.1 scores per dollar compared to 3.3. So graphics is why you wanna buy an M4 Max it's a better bank for the buck, at least in graphics rendering. Now for general graphics compute in Geekbench 6, we have 112,000 compared to 192. So it's not double the performance like we saw before, but about 70% higher, which is still great. Now, what about gaming performance? I have 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite open right here, and not a lot of people game on their Mac, but if you're going to want to, you probably want the M4 Max. And here we have 105.3 FPS compared to 58.1. So that is close to double the performance there. And that's great to see because in the past, the Max chips did not scale this well. So Apple definitely improved some bottlenecks. And if you're gonna game, well, 
If you're gonna be doing translation layers for Windows games, you need the extra performance. Now, another area where you need as much graphics performance as you could get is Blender. But first, have you ever wanted to buy something for a Black Friday sale but couldn't because you forgot your PayPal password? Thankfully, our sponsor Keeper Security has a built-in password generator that creates strong, unique passwords and stores them in an encrypted vault, automatically filling your credentials on any device when you log into your accounts. It can also store vital encrypted info like credit card details, personal notes, files, and more. So try today using the code MAXTECH40 for 40% off Keeper personal and family plans by using the link down below. Both of these systems are very quick here, but the M4 Max is almost twice as fast. Once again, 24 seconds compared to 46, almost perfect scaling, which is just awesome to see. So if you're serious about 3D rendering work, the M4 Max just makes sense. Now, what about when we use a program that combines CPU and graphics and RAM? Well, here I have Lightroom Classic with 500 edited high resolution raw files. Let's go ahead and hit export and start our timer. And Adobe's done a great job updating this program to really harness these machines. And as our test is running here, it's interesting to see that the M4 is heating up quite a bit, possibly throttling down a little bit. And we're not actually able to use all that graphics power so we are actually limited by the fact that we don't have that much more CPU cores to work in conjunction with the graphics. Because of that, the M4 Pro isn't that far behind and it took six minutes and five seconds compared to four minutes and 22 seconds, a difference of roughly 30%. So that's a far cry from having double the graphics cores, double the RAM, extra CPU performance um, I would expect better than that. And that just shows that the M4 Pro is very well balanced between CPU and graphics performance for these kind of tasks. Now getting into video editing with Final Cut for regular 4K editing, the M4 Max is pretty much overkill because the M4 Pro now performs similar to like the M1 Max. Now only difference is exporting and with this five minute project, you get a minute and 15 seconds compared to two minutes because of the dual encoders built into the Max chip. So if you're doing stuff even with LUTs film grain, as long as you don't mind waiting a little bit longer during export, it is great. The difference only starts to come in if you're working with really crazy footage like Canon RAW right here, 4K60, maybe Red RAW. Surprisingly, the M4 Pro can actually play it back now at this price point. But if you're somebody that renders their project, say if it's not running smoothly, or you wanna just make sure everything is perfect, crazy titles, things like that, that is where I'd expect the M4 Max to be more powerful, but my goodness, guys, wow, we had 45 seconds compared to 48 seconds here with this raw footage. And that's probably because the CPU, once again, could be limiting this M4 Max. Not that it's, not that it is weak, but Apple really stepped up their pro chip this year. And the last test I wanna do here is an AI test with Apple's new magnetic mask. I'm gonna go ahead and select our subject here. Will the extra graphics performance really help for this new AI tracking that is really cool in Final Cut 11? My goodness, guys, I was not expecting this too. If you guys look at these, uh, the progress bar here, they are so close to each other. Man, we got two minutes and nine seconds compared to two minutes and 14 seconds. Wow, I'll just say if I was buying one of these for Final Cut, I would be buying the M4 Pro. And now in DaVinci Resolve, I have this project open. This is Denoising Blackmagic Raw. And DaVinci can really harvest the pure graphics performance. And if we take a look right here, we're getting about 15 frames per second from this 24 FPS timeline compared to perfect 24. So in this scenario, the M4 Pro just can't do it because you need so much extra graphics performance. Now that doesn't mean that everybody for DaVinci needs M4 Max. For regular 4K, it's gonna be a similar result to Final Cut, but I have one last test here provided by Team 2 Films. It's a benchmark designed for DaVinci for heavier graphics use. And here the M4 Max is definitely going quicker. You guys might be able to see we have different, very tough footage. We have um, fusion keying going on right now. 
This is what really is gonna push the systems as hard as it can, really harness the extra GPU power. So if you're somebody doing extreme things with really tough footage, this will be our result. And unfortunately, the M4 Pro keeps crashing on me. <laughs> Whereas this one right here, it's using 37 gigs, 42 gigs, a lot of RAM. So I think this is just too extreme for this system, at least with the 24 gigs of RAM. Basically maxing out that M4 Max over here. Just got finished, four minutes and 20 seconds. The M4 Pro, if it finished, I mean, it would be roughly about eight minutes. So if you know that you just need the best graphics possible in a system, well, you need the M4 Max. And then you probably wouldn't be watching this video. But I think for most people, if you're gonna buy the M4 Max, make sure that you know that your program is mostly graphics dependent. Because like we saw in a lot of these other tests, if it's not, the gains aren't very big and your performance per dollar spending the extra money just isn't there. And now what about our battery life? We have 54% on the M4 Pro, 41% on the M4 Max. So it's not a terribly huge difference because in a lot of these, we weren't able to max out the system because of various bottlenecks, but it definitely is there. And like I talked about, you definitely get more fan noise as well on this system. So if you're trying to decide if it's worth extra money, I think for most people it is not. Back in 2021 with the M1 Max, it offered a lot more performance. The M3 Max had a lot more CPU performance, but with the M4 systems, the M4 Pro is so well balanced I mean, the bang for the buck is excellent. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.